Hey, this is Dr. D. This is Rory. We are Chaos Doctrine. You are watching the Chana 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 podcast. Keep rocking. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of my podcast. Uh, we have special guest today joining all the way from South Africa. We have members of Chaos Doctrine. Hi, guys. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having us. Yeah, so how are you guys doing today? Oh, we're doing well. It's a, it's um, after 10 a.m. here, so, you know, still shaking off a little bit of whiskey from last night. Getting ready for a show for later today, so we still need to pack up rig and stuff. Right, so, oh, so that's good to hear that the concert shows are, live shows are happening. So, watch the, watch the show today. Um, we're playing a show very close to our space, which is nice. Uh, about six bands. What's it called? Infectious Metal Outbreak Africa. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so us and a couple of other South African bands having a show. We've right. had shows here for a while since, um, sure, I would say since about August, September. Obviously, so that impacts on how late the show can go. But curfew in South Africa is midnight at the moment. So you can still fit in an okay show and uh, get home in time to not be in trouble. Right. Um, so, guys, where, where are you in South Africa? Where, which city? In Johannesburg, which is sort of the main city or one of two main cities um, along with Cape Town. And then in Rory is from East London, but he, which is about nine half away. But he travels up every second or so to jam with us. But right. we're based in Johannesburg. Right, right, right. Um, so, so guys, uh, can you tell me a little bit about the band? So, what you guys do in the band? Also, introduce yourself. Uh, also, tell who, who who's missing today. Yeah, you want to go first? Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Rory. Uh, I play drums for Chaos Doctrine. Um, uh, yeah, no, just jamming the drums, putting my little my little pieces in here, here and there. Um, yeah, it's great to meet you. Um, what channel is it, bro? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Daniel. Fucking, yeah. Uh, Dr. D on the uh, Missing is Phil, um, Phil, our bass player, and a visual genius, so he takes care of all our visual aspects. And then Alec, who is our guitarist, slash engineer, slash master, slash uh, producer. So the two of them couldn't make it today. Right. So da Danny, when I saw your name, Danny Berger, you 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 know this movie, Adam Sandler movie, uh, that's my boy, the Donny Berger. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> oh, I haven't seen that. I'm going to take it out. Oh, they're making fun of me in that. <laughs> no, I mean, I, when I when I saw your name, I I reminded of that character because he's a, like a you know rocking guy, you know. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Awesome. I must go check it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so guys, can you tell me a little bit about uh, your childhood and, uh, you know, like your early memories of like music? Sure. I'll start. I think um, I sort of grew up on a mix of weird local South African music. Um, my dad was very much into strict, like this weird offshoot country blues. My mom loved the Beatles and Elvis and uh, the Beach Boys and the Bee Gees. And then when I was 13, I got introduced to and uh, Motley Crue. And when I was 14, I was introduced to Judas Priest and Slayer. And then it was kind of over for me. Mm. Um, so metal since then, you know, playing in band since I was 16 years old. I'm 43 now, so I guess it's not just a phase. Mm -hmm. And uh, loving every minute of it, you know, bro. Cool. Um, geez. Yeah, pretty much the same story. My mother was into uh, Elvis, really into Elvis, um, into Creedence Clearwater Revival, you know, Bad Company, The Eagles, that sort of stuff. Um, I originally started listening to like ska punk or, or punk rock. Mm. And then 
uh, one day I came across a Man of War CD, Man of War Triumph of Steel. Um, and I fell in love with the song with Power of Thy Sword. I've got this thing about medieval, like the medieval times, knights, wizards, you know, that whole magic thing. Um, yeah, and then, then after that, my sister came into the house with the Slayer CD, Seasons of the Abyss. Um, <laughs> and then since then, since uh, War Ensemble, yeah, I've just, yes, yeah, I've just been into, into metal flat out there. Eh? Um, I started playing drums at about, about 14 years old, but obviously I started doing the punk stuff first. And then um, once I heard Dave Lombardo's double bass um, and then the double bass on the, man, on the Manual album, I was, yeah, I was taken there. Eh? Um, so I've been playing drums now since 14, 35 years old. Uh, joined, joined Chaos Doctrine like last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's been fucking amazing ever since. Eh? I mean, these guys really don't mess around. They've got their, they've got their game together. So for, for me, coming from, because East London is a very, very small town. So coming from a small town to such a professional setup was just a dream come true for me. Right. So, uh, guys, I saw you, you actually have a tribute. Uh, you did a cover of Slayer. Uh, I, I, I listened to that on Spotify. So, uh, uh, no, in YouTube, you have a video for that, right? So, uh, yeah. were you guys able to see Slayer before? I got to see Slayer once. I was lucky enough. I was in Canada in 2010. And um, I got to see them playing with Megadeth and with Testament and was blown away. Slayer has been my favorite band for a long time. So, uh, I was absolutely blown away. We've got very few big bands that come to South Africa. We've seen a couple of um, the bigger death metal acts like Behemoth and, and um, Septic Flesh and such. Right. I think the biggest metal bands really come here. We had, we've had Iron Maiden and Judas Priest was supposed to come, never did. So um, we can, we're, we're sort of the forgotten continent when it comes to, to metal band tours, you know, but I was lucky enough to see them in, in uh, Canada, like I said, in 2010. And it was amazing. It was the original lineup, World Painted Blood Tour, and it was just ridiculous. Right, right. Um, I, I was able to see them in 2017 and 2019 because the farewell tour, they included Philippines. Uh, I think Asia, they, Southeast Asia, they included okay. Philippines as one of the destinations. So it was quite lucky to see them. Uh, I was able to take a picture with them, actually, uh, we had like a meet and greet thing. So it was really, uh, I felt, so, I almost cried when I like saw them for the first sound check. It's like <laughs> a dream came true. <laughs> very jealous. Yeah. Very jealous. I have three Slayer tattoos, you know. Uh, I, I, I love that band. Tom Araya is like best metal vocalist of all time in my mind. Right. So I'm very jealous. Yeah. Um, so, so guys, before Chaos Doctrine, tell me a little bit about the bands you played before before that. Cool. I'll give you a bit of scope. So, um, I was in a band called Bedlam from 95, 96, uh, later in a band called uh, Malachi, and then um, in a band called Dedex. And I was in Dedex with two guys that eventually started a band called Subhuman Race with me. Subhuman Race became Chaos Doctrine. Mm. Um, in 2013, one of our guitarists emigrated to New Zealand and Alec joined. Um, and then in 2019, our drummer moved to, um, to the coast, actually pretty close to where Rory stays. And Rory joined early last year in 2020. So that's kind of my history and, and, and Chaos Doctrine's chronology because I started the band. So Rory, like you said, joined us. You want to talk about your other bands? Yeah. Um, well, at the moment, I, I play for uh, for Second Fate. That's the local band in um, East London. We're just on a little bit of a hiatus at the moment. And then I also play for like an online band um, that's based in Joburg called Hilika. It's like a slam, like a like a hillbilly slam sort of take, or like a hillbilly take on on the slam. Um, yeah, no, uh, we've done a couple of Metal for Africa shows, which is quite good. Metal for Africa is like a collective here in South Africa mm. for like a lot of metal bands. Um, for us, 
uh, for forsaking fate, uh, you know, we hardly ever play in our in our own town. I mean, we play Port Elizabeth, which is one of the biggest cities in the coast, and, and then we also primarily played Joburg. Um, yeah, so for the first the first time ever playing in Joburg was like yes, it was it was like a real wake up call because the guys down here, the level of professionalism is, professionalism is like next level. Mm. So yeah, you know, it's it's it's. It's been a good run, um, and I'm really enjoying myself at the moment with chaos. It's rocking out hard, but yeah, no, I mean, I don't have much of a long history. I mean, you know, it's literally just there, there's this running joke in in town that where I come from that I that I have been the metal drummer for every single band over the last like twelve years. Yeah, we have a real message in South Africa, so. Uh... <laughs> There's a lot of drummers that play for more than one band. So we share drummers just because there aren't enough of them, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh, actually, uh, I I only discovered South African bands just last year because I, I knew about like Valvadenia, but only a few bands that I knew. And then I got to know only yeah. about the South African scene just last year during the pandemic. And I'm so surprised because there's so many artists, right? So there are so many good bands in South Africa. Yeah. Also a diverse scene. I think we've got, we've got Deadline that plays sort of very old school metal, you know, in the, in the vein of Maiden and, and Priest. And we've got um, um, State Dependency that's a sort of like a groove, heavy, slight, I don't want to say slower, but a different kind. And then there's a couple of thrash bands, a couple of like proper death metal bands. So yeah, I think the scene is is quite diverse. Mm. And most of the bands are in Joburg. Okay, we've got an, a, a pretty good Cape Town scene too. There's bands down there like um, Devil Speak um, and Southern Death Cult that also play some serious metal. You know, so I think we've got a we've got good talent down here. I just think the scene the scene has been on a downhill sort of since the late 1990s. Brief resurgences every now and then, but obviously COVID also had a huge impact on venues, mm. on, on um, artists' via life viability, um, and all kinds of things like that. But um, I mean, all of us have a job, so we sort of soldier on, you know. Right, right. <clears throat> um, so, Danny, uh, can you tell me a little bit about wh what's the reason or what's the idea behind uh, chaos doctrine? Uh, about the name and also the essence of the band? Sure. Um, well, to give you the full long story, I remember a long, long time ago sitting in nightclubs and every time they played Rob Zombie, all the girls would run onto the dance floor, you know. So I had this idea in my mind of doing something quite electro, but quite heavy still. So... As, as we started building Subhuman Race First and Chaos Doctrine, that was sort of the driving idea, but it quickly became much, much heavier than I originally had intended. So um, the industrial element is very prevalent in, in Chaos Doctrine. We call ourselves an industrialized death metal band because we're not 100% electro. So if you listen to our songs, um, there's different elements. We use keyboards, we use... Um, all kinds of synthesizers. We use a lot of industrial and a lot of um, voice loops and things like that. But you'll also find songs that has very, very little of that. So we're first and foremost, we're a metal band. And then secondly, we industrialize our metal a little bit. So you'll find Chaos Doctrine is, is, is more than, it's a bit of a concept. So, um, you know, the colors in our art, the, the way the band logos are put together, the way the songs are written, um, and the name itself, all of that really hang together as, as a full concept rather than, I don't want to say just a band, but we're not just some Oaks writing songs. Mm. We, um, when, the full, when we play as a full setup, and I'll explain that in a minute, um, it's a big show. We put in a lot. There's props. Uh, we've got video that plays while we play. Um, there's costumes, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. So for us, it is, it is a big industrial concept to make the band visual and not, not auditory. We always think, you know what, if I want to listen to a band, I can just put, go on YouTube and listen to them. If I want to watch a band, I want to see something happen, you know? Right. Um, 
I'll say when the when we put the full band on, like the show we, we, we're doing today, we're not putting the full band on. Uh, what I mean with that is we're not doing the industrial version of Chaos Doctrine today. Uh, it's our first show with Rory, so we, and we don't have a lot of setup time because it's a festival. So we're going all out. We're just playing thrash death metal today as fast as we can, as loud as we can. Um, in June, we're having our second albums launch. Then we'll put on the full show, costumes, screens, props, everything that we can throw at the audience, you know? Right. So yeah, last year when, when Rory couldn't make it up, we came up with this concept called Chaos Doctrine Light. And Phil and Alec and I played a couple of shows without drums. So we would use um, computerized drums, have a little laptop behind us to play all our loops and samples and the drums. Because like I said, Rory couldn't make it up because traveling was severely restricted, obviously. So uh, yeah, we kind of went with that idea, but in the, in the opposite direction. So now it's four dudes, old school, ugly, ugly death metal, you know? Right. But yeah, like I said, Chaos Doctrine really comes from the concept of where the world is at. Uh, our lyrics are like that. Um, it's dark. It's heavy. It's nasty. You know? Right. Like, it's right. supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to find any ballads here, bro. No, no ballads. No ballads. Right. Yeah. Um, I was actually listening to your songs uh, uh, mostly on Spotify. So you have your first self title uh, release uh when was that release the first one first album it was june 2018 three years right. ago. i really love some of the songs i i really dig the song the genocide number there's a song called the oh, yeah. genocide number uh can you tell me a little bit about the album yeah sure um yeah genocide number is what we call it our rock and roll song you know because it's, it's got that sort of like punchy, tap your foot in your head, rock and roll. And that's still in our live set. We close our live set with that because I love playing that song. Mm. So that's your classic kind of dictator uh, coming into power and uh, fucking everybody he promised a paradise over to. We see that, you know, all over Africa, all over the world. Um, you know, classic, let's lead the revolution. Let's promise the people something better. Let's chop off some heads. And then when... When that person comes into power, it's it's the same or worse. So that's really where the genocide number goes with the lyrics. Fat war themes. If you watch the, the video, it's also like that. Um, our original album was quite a couple of years in the making because we had we've we had member changes, um, we had studio changes, we had producer changes. So the album took quite a long time to come to fruition. But finally, when it did, we were quite happy with the product. It's very raw. The production is is um, still very sort of old school. And that's, that's really what we went for with it. Um, there's a mix of songs on there. There's hard and heavy stuff like, like FTG, My Demise, mm. uh, but more rock and roll, like, like the Genocide number, also Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos. That's got a bit of a, a sort of old school rock and roll, thrash metal twist to it. Um, with our new album, we really went for, for sort of a high level of maturity in writing, a high level of maturity in production. So you'll hear it. We've got uh, two singles out from that. Um, Father Gregory, which came out last year, mm. and uh, Black Friday Bedlam, which we managed to get uh, Jorgen Sandstrom on. And you'll find uh, that the production is just it's cleaner and, and uh, tighter. And I think the songwriting is also a lot more mature and uh, complex. So... That's where we're going, but we still love our old stuff. We still play a lot of it live, um, depending on the show. You know, when we pick our set list, we always think, what's going to get the audience happy? What's going to make us happy to play again? Yeah. Uh, Father Gr Grigori, that's, uh, I mean, you guys have amazing music video for that. right? And I'm, I'm really like, I really attracted to that video. It's really amazing how you do that uh, Father Grigori video. And you also did oh, yeah. a sort of a Russian version, right, of that song? Yes. yes. So Father Grigori was actually shot in our studio. A friend of mine, Pierre Smith, makes movies. He's a movie maker. He's won international European awards for dramas he does. So we were always drinking whiskey saying, hey, man, you should, you should make a music video. And right. one day I twisted it far enough. So he did that video for us. I think it came out fantastic. I love that video. And then because Father Grigori is about disputed, we had the idea ages ago. I actually think it was our previous drummer, Ralph, who had the idea. I can't remember. Mm. And um, I fished around online. And long story short, we found this guy. Um, and uh, he was keen because he's into, 
he's into the sort of the same music as we are. So uh, he rewrote he rewrote the lyrics for me. Demeter Grell is his name. He's in like 15 bands in Russia. He's a pro muso. That's all he does. So he wrote, rewrote the lyrics into Russian and recorded it for me. And I think it came out great. I think the Russian language just makes that song even angrier right. than it sounded in English, you know. So we're really happy with how it came out. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it, it makes it, the Russian version makes it more evil sounding. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> and I find I'm um, Russian, like like my my home language is Afrikaans, which is like a derivative of, of Dutch and German, you know. And Afrikaans is also a very coarse, harsh language. So there's a lot of consonant sounds and a lot of and sounds like that. And Russian in my ears also, it sounds very coarse and angry. And I guess in the West, we also grew up with this conception of the evil USSR. Um, communism is bad. The red, the red danger is waiting for us. You know, that's the propaganda we were fed. So right. the Russian language, I think, in our subconscious mind is still a very scary thing. So for me, that song with these vocals just sounds fucking horribly bad, horribly like nasty in my brain. So I love it. I love it. I think it came out fantastic. And he's such a great guy. Right. Right. We wish um, you could come down here and play it with us. Yeah. Or we'll go to Moscow and yeah, go play it with yeah. him there. Moscow. Moscow. Yeah, you 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 guys seen those photos, right? Like Metallica in Moscow. I think it was 1991. Yeah. I think right that that picture that with a yeah, like, billion the Moscow, the Moscow Peace Festival in '86 with uh, Bon Jovi and Motley Crue and Ozzy Osbourne, and then the Pantera one in the '90s. I think the Russian metal fans are brutal, dude. We'd love yeah. we'd love to take a whole show over there. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 crazy, uh, and I think guys, you you should also you know consider coming to the Southeast Asia also because here in We'd Philippines, Indonesia, India. there's a lot of fans, lot of crazy fans actually. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I've been I've, the closest I've been is Thailand. I went there on holiday, you know. So that's the closest I've been. But yeah, I'd go I'd go anywhere where metal is big and where um. You know where we can do our thing. It would be fantastic. Maybe right. one day when this thing settles down a little bit, we hope um, we can come see interesting parts of the world. Come headbang with you to some Slayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you know, this thing that uh, I always do is like, I if I see a guy with the Slayer shirt, wherever it is, inside a bank or whatever, I will shout Slayer. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing a Slayer shirt today, so Rory's not allowed to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we, we look like twins, yeah? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so, the the new single that you released, uh, Black Friday Beldum, Beldum right? With uh, this, oh, no. this included guest vocals from uh, George and Stanstrom of Grave, and he was in uh, Entom yeah. Balsway, right? Yeah, Jürgen is a is a Swedish metal legend. He was an entombed. Uh, he was in Grave. There was a couple of other bands, Torture Division, um, Crooks, and his current big project is called the Project Hate. And um, Jürgen Jürgen was in South Africa with Entombed a good couple of years ago. Mm. And our previous drummer Ralph was he was he's like he's as, as obsessed with Entombed as we are with Slayer. And he became really good friends with, with Jürgen. So, um, and Alec, our, our guitarist, is also pretty good friends with Jürgen. So, um, Ralph actually reached out to him and said, hey, man, we've got this song. There's this piece of the song that reminds me of a Project Hate song, and we'd love to get your vocals on it. Do you feel like doing it? So, Jürgen was like, fuck yeah. And he did it for us. So, um, this was a good couple of years ago already, about two, I would say about two and a half years. And then... Um, yeah, we were set to release our album last year. COVID happened. So um, at the end of last year, when we re 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 remixed and reproduced the album, I said to the guys, dudes, we're still sitting on this track with Jürgen. We need to get that out there. And we decided to push it up this year. So it was super well received. We're so grateful to Jürgen for doing it because his voice is just so fucking brutal. There's, there's not very many voices in international death metal that touches that guy's growl, you know. So being a vocalist, it's quite intimidating. But at the same time, it's just such an honor to to do vocals with him on a song, you know. Right, right. <clears throat> yeah, it was a it was a great great song. And then, um, you know, also I think it's a it's like few weeks 
probably like a couple of weeks back, uh, LG Petrov of Entob also passed away, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, we, like, we're very sad about that. I think especially Alec. Um, Alec is a huge Entombed fan. He grew up with the band. He toured with them in South Africa. Mm. So for him, it was a really big shock. And I think for us, just... You know, we, we have these heroes and, and when they go, it's, it's not a great experience ever, you know. Right. And especially when, I mean, there's no good way to go, but fuck, cancer has just touched so many people's lives. And it's, a, it's just fucking terrible. You would think in 2021, we could do something about this, you know. Yeah. Hashtag fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, you, so you have two songs from, released already from the new album. So what else is coming? And when is the new album going to be released? So the album is set for release the 25th of June. Um, it's called... Oh, wait. No, I'm not telling you what it's called. If you want to see what it's called, go watch the lyric video to Black Friday, Bedlam with Jorgen Sandstrom. You see, you'll see the album cover. Mm. You'll see the band's the album name. And you'll see the lineup. We'll, we'll tell you later what it is called, but you can see it there. Um, we've got another single called uh, Blood Serpent God coming on the 25th of June with the album release. Mm. Um, it's, got another, it's got another international collab. We're loving doing those. So also an exciting one, something completely different to Jürgen, something completely different to Demeter. So it is pretty, pretty cool. And um, we've, we've played Blood Soap and God live quite a couple of times. So some of the local fans will know it. It's very different to Grigori. It's very different to Black Friday. It's sort of a slow steam train of old school death metal. You know, where Gregorian Black Friday is fast and nasty. This one is slow and nasty. It's going to fuck you up. So it's, uh, it's cool. After that, we'll see which other singles we want to release. We might throw out another cover version in the meantime if we, if we find the fans get restless. But we want to hold back our album a little bit. We want to prepare for our album launch, obviously, with Rory to put the full big show on mm. on the 26th of June. So we're very excited about that. In the meantime, we're also writing new stuff for album number three. Um, after album number two, we'll bring out EP number two. We can talk about EP number one if you want. Um, so I love doing alternative versions. So we, we might put it out EP number two, maybe EP number three. You don't know. Let's see how things go. Yeah. I, I, I really enjoyed the EP, the Chaos Chronicles volume one, the remixes that you put out. It's, uh, nice. you know, hearing FTG and then hearing the remix. It's, 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 it's really cool. <laughs> oh, you dug like that? Nice, man. Nice. Yeah, we'll do another EP. So I've already done a remix of, um, of, of Blood Serpent God, which we're bringing out. Um, there's also alternative versions of some of our other songs we want to do. So there's always ideas, you know. We like to keep our creativity wide. Whatever is fun, what, anything goes in this band room as long as it's vaguely metal, you know. Mm. Um, I like the hot techno kind of remix of FTG, and I wanted to do another one. So we did. And yeah, there's some more exciting stuff coming. We've got another track called The Right on our new album, which is very sludgy, sort of um, maybe a little bit of clutch, a little bit of crowbar, you know. And uh, we're doing a completely different version of that track as well, bef even, even before people have heard the original. So when, when that comes out later, we will we'll throw some more alternative versions at the world. Right. So You like uh, the African version of uh, Genocide Number? Did you listen to that? Yeah. Uh, uh, so Danny, I, I, so I, I got to know about most of these South African bands because of uh, somehow I, I got connected with Devo, you know, yeah. Devo. Yeah, and then that's how I sort of got connected with a lot of these bands. Uh, so how long you been working with Devo? How long have you been working with Diva? Jeez, I mean, we've been working with Diva for like the last three, two to three years. So yeah, Rory Rory worked with Devo with um with Forsaken with Forsaken Fight. Devo is also how Rory got introduced to us. Mm -hmm. We've been working with Devo since about 2019, I would say. Right. So he's a great guy. He's, yeah. he's definitely one of the um I don't want to say faces because he, he doesn't put his face out there, so he's not on the stage and stuff, but he's one of the, the big mechanics mm. or engineers in the South African metal scene. He really helps us keep keep it alive and he really helps us reach guys like you you know because without mm -hmm. him we wouldn't know how to get hold of you yeah so he's, yeah. he's a fantastic like, he's a friend to the band alec has known him for a very long time and we we love working with him and we love hanging out with him when he's here because yeah. he, he lives in cape town 
So we don't see him often, but he's a fantastic oak. I'd recommend these services to anyone all over the world. I mean, the world is this big now because of the internet. So uh, you can yeah. you can help anyone. It doesn't have to be South Africa. Right, right. <clears throat> so uh, now that you guys are, I mean, you are obviously playing at a gig today. And then what do you see? When when do you think that uh, things will go back to normal with, with the live music in South Africa? Um, I think at the moment we're, we're lucky in Johannesburg to at least have a bit of a scene going on. Mm. And we have to be home in bed by midnight, obviously. But <laughs> but at least there's a bit of a scene going on. When it's going to go back to normal, I, I can't say. I mean, we, I guess the whole world can only wait and see what the, what the vaccine does. Um, you know, travel is constricted. Travel is more expensive. Mm. Um, there's still a lot of countries in a lot of trouble with COVID. So, yeah, I guess we can only wait and see what the vaccine does. Eh? Until such time, we'll do our thing. We'll, we'll make the music. And when we can bring it to people, that, that will depend on, you know, international dynamics, I guess. Right. Um, so, Dan, Danny, um, uh, Roy, Roy, so uh, what, what is your message to, to people who support you? Uh, listen to your music, you know. I think, well, thank you, first and foremost. Yeah. I think we're blessed to have fans all over the world. Yeah. When we look at our Spotify map or our, you know, our iTunes map, there's always people all over the world from Alaska to Australia, which is fantastic. Yeah. So thank you, first and foremost. We're really glad people enjoy our interesting blend of thrash, death, industrial, and all, all things metal. And then secondly, just, you know, keep going. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talk to us. Tell us what you like. Um, and uh, wait and wait and see what the second album brings because if there's something on there for literally any kind of metal head, it's gonna fucking blow your mind. I hope because it does mine. <laughs> I'm seriously proud of that album coming, and it's a from the artwork to every song on there is just I I think some of the best work we've ever done until the third album, which will then be some of the best work we've ever done. You know, right? Yeah, I mean, quite exciting. Um, any or well, Any shout outs? Uh, anybody you want to shout out to? Uh, shout out to, to Dave Devo, obviously. Um, shout out to all of the bands in the SA doing the, doing the hard work, sludging through it. Shout out to, um, geez, shout out to you, bro. Thank yeah. you for <laughs> fucking the channel. Yeah, thanks for bringing us to the Philippines, man. Yeah, bro. That is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. for me too, just... Devo's great, and and thanks to all our fans. Like yeah. I said, all over the world. Hopefully, hopefully we can grow a bit of a fan base in the Philippines as well. That would be fantastic. Yeah, definitely. I think Chaos Doctrine uh, sound is really will be attractive to Filipinos because there's a lot of you know fans for that sort of music. Yeah, you guys are so next heavy, time, and you uh, know, it's next pretty... time instead of Russian, maybe next time instead of Russian, we'll do it uh, with one of your guys. <laughs> of course <laughs> yeah that'll be cool uh, <clears throat> so so daddy rory so thank uh, it's it's great to talk to you and then i'm uh, i really enjoy the music that's why i wanted to talk to you guys and uh, looking forward to the new album and all the new singles and uh, keep making great music so have a, a awesome. great day ahead What we must do, what we must do just before the album release, we must do a bit of an exclusive for you on um, on our on our next single, Blood Serpent God, and on the album, you know. So let's talk to Devo, get our stuff to you. I'd love for you to premiere it in, in the Philippines. It would be fantastic. Yes, of course. You. Yes. <laughs> That, love to. Uh, so uh, tell everyone how they can follow you and how they can listen to your music. Oh, we're everywhere. All our stuff. Everything that's out there is free on YouTube. We're also on Spotify. We're on iTunes. We're on Deezer. We're on digital platforms I've never heard of all over the world. So uh, YouTube first stop. We've got a video for every track. Go check it out. Our full first album, our full EP is on there. Father Gregory is in there in three different versions. Uh, Blood Soup, uh, sorry, uh, Black Friday Bedlam is in there. Two different versions. Loads of exclusive stuff. Find us on Facebook. Find us on Instagram. We are everywhere. Right. So, so Danny, Rory, uh, so uh, keep on rocking. 
and uh, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> yeah, man. Go well. You too, bro. Thanks for having us. Thanks.